Welcome to this shortwave radio channel, and we're going to talk about something called dynamic range. Dynamic range is not a term that we will often see on portable radios like this. Why? Because we'll be very fair here. On most portables, the dynamic range isn't that great. And if there would be an improvement to be had there, that would be one on most of the portables. What's dynamic range exactly? So when you listen to the radio and you listen to a signal, your radio, I call it electronics gymnastics. The electronic circuit has to adjust and cope with all sorts of external factors. You're listening to a signal. I'm listening to WWV 10 megahertz. It has to cope with there might be a strong signal nearby. It has to cope with any other thing, interference. It has to cope with... Maybe, um, you know, some other um, impact from maybe the antenna, the external antenna, and so on. The electronic circuit has to readjust itself constantly to make what you hear audible and, you know, make it easy for you to listen to so that you can understand what they're saying or what the broadcast is all about. So it doesn't show, but the electronics in the radio isn't static. It's actually very dynamic. It's always readjusting itself, depending on the signal level, the up and down of the shortwave signals all around it. Some signals near the frequency you're listening to might be weak at times. It might pop up to a very strong level another time, go back down. There might be several strong signals up and down all the time around the frequency you're listening to. And the electronics needs to cope with that. It needs to react in a way that you won't notice too much and that you will be able to listen to what you hear. So that's basically what dynamic range is going to do. The better the dynamic range, the better the receiver's electronics is capable of coping with all exterior factors, ex external factors, and strong signals, and the up and down of propagation and you are just not noticing any effect on your receiver. When does it show that dynamic range has a problem? Usually, what you'll see in a radio with poor dynamic range, or dynamic range that isn't as good as maybe another one you're listening to, is um, um, an increase in kind of a noise around it. There's kind of a white noise that can be created around it that white noise can actually wash out the signal that you're trying to hear. So um, that dynamic range can actually make that signal disappear, not because it's not sensitive enough to hear, but they're kind of the electronic noise of all the, the electronics coping with everything around it makes it difficult to hear suddenly. And you might turn on another radio and say, well, on this radio, it's clearer. What's happening? Well, it could often have to do with the dynamic range of the electronics of that receiver. They're not, once again, not all built equal. But in all fairness, most portables, whatever price you pay, don't have that great of a dynamic range in general. Uh, but yes, there are better radios than others with dynamic range in respect. Um, dynamic range also will help the receiver cope with a very, very powerful signal really close to what you're listening to that might desensitize the radio. And that means that that strong signal is going to be there, but with a good dynamic range, the receiver is still capable of giving you what you want, even if it's weak. And that is a sign of a good radio. Very good dynamic range receivers in general are expensive tabletop receivers. So um, that's where often they can cope with a real strong signal, but you're trying to listen to that very weak, exotic signal next to it, and you're going to be able to get it anyways. A portable, most portables might have a hard time with it because of the dynamic range not being in the same league. But overall, uh, you know what? Don't go over crazy over it because in many respects, unless, uh, you know, of a very specific situation, very often... And with today's signals that are not, you know, there's not as many signals as 30 years ago, dynamic range is not as important as it used to be, but it's still a defining factor that can make a difference. It can happen sometimes 
that that little weak signal you're going to hear is going to be better on one than the other because of the dynamic range. It's still going to happen, definitely, uh, and coping with the strong signals. But dynamic range is something that I would say if there's something lacking in most portable radios, dynamic range is one of them. And that's where people tend to go maybe to higher-end receivers for maybe a better chance uh, or opportunity of really, really tough DX in very, very difficult radio environment with strong signals around. So um, in most portables that I listen to, uh, including the 501X, what I'll notice sometimes is a slight white noise that might show up on frequencies where there's weak signals that could and tend to indicate to me that there's a couple of strong signals that are making it a little tough on the receiver's electronics and the dynamic range isn't good enough to cope. But I don't really complain much and I rarely talk about the dynamic range of any portables because in my opinion, they're in respect pretty much crappy on all portables, <laughs> including the Iron Texans. Um, and, and if you want to have something really good, you have to go to really a high end radio. Uh, but still, you know, um, it's, it's something to think about if you're extremely serious and, and want to invest in something really, really good. Uh, that could be something to think about. Uh, dynamic range can make a difference sometimes, especially in DXing, uh, where dynamic range can have a big impact. Uh, medium wave DXing. If you have powerhouse signals around you, trying to DX the world on medium wave, uh, dynamic range, good dynamic range could make a huge difference on you receiving that weak uh, transatlantic signal uh, near a very, you know, big powerhouse AM station where you live. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.